the Health and Learn podcast slash Recall and Motivation with Crazy Fitness Guy. Uh, before we get started, uh, if you want to follow me on social media, you can follow me at Jimmy Close Speaker on Facebook and Instagram and Jimmy Close Speak on Twitter. You can follow Crazy Fitness Guy on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Crazy Fitness Guy. And uh, make sure you subscribe to the show, review, follow, etc. And if you want to support and help the show continue to grow, subscribe to Crazy Fitness Guy Premium Podcasts, and you'll get ex- uh, extra benefits like listening no ads, uh, private Discord channel that well no one else gets in. And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you also get some other benefits. So check that out. Thirty dollars a month or three ninety nine per month. I did was running a Black Friday sale, but you snooze you lose. It was ninety percent off. Ha ha ha. Wink wink wink. It was. But anyway, uh today's guest he likes he loves fitness, which I can definitely appreciate. And uh we're going to talk about everything about fitness, healthy living, et cetera. And we're going to take it from there. Welcome aboard. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on the podcast. I'm really excited to dive into this and I think we're going to have an amazing conversation. So before we get started, can you tell us a little bit who you, about who you are, what you do, how you got started and why you got started? Yeah. So my name is Kian Yu and I'm from Vancouver, Canada. And it's a little bit of a long story on kind of how I got started on my own journey. But growing up, I was always in a competitive setting. I played a lot of sports and being in teams in a team sport environment, there's always people pushing you to be better. There's always you're you're always trying to push yourself to become better than the the other players on the team and it's just very competitive and we're always trying to looking we're always trying to look to improve ourselves in on the playing field. And as I got older, I realized that we're able to take that mentality and apply that to our everyday life. And that's kind of how I started my personal development journey. And as I got older, I started picking up some books and started reading about self-help books that taught me a little bit more about uh, personal development. And then eventually I got into learning about marketing and entrepreneurship. And from there, it kind of propelled me to want to just pursue learning more about business, learning more about entrepreneurship, learning more about uh, just being the best that we can be. And eventually, I decided to get my real estate license. And then as I got my real estate license, I'm like, I need to be in better shape. And as I got into the best shape of my life, I felt that that was actually an avenue that I'd be able to help other people with as well. And that's what inspired me to want to bring people on the personal development journey and really help them become their best and highest self, whether that is through mindset, through their training, through their nutrition, and just really be able to help them become like a new 2.0 version of themselves. So from there, I decided to get my personal training certificate and eventually started doing online coaching helping people on that journey. That sounds um, awesome. There's a few points I wanted to point out and I can relate to. Uh, I didn't do many sports growing up. I did uh, do karate because I got into it at a young age when I was growing up in New Jersey. Though at the time it was uh, Taekwondo. but then I moved into Pennsylvania. I got into uh, mixed martial arts, and uh, I, I just love it. I uh, it, like you. It, it pushes me to do stuff I never thought I could do. And even though I've, I, I've been working out at my house for many many years, and sometimes going to the gym. Karate always keeps me motivated when, when I think it's like, come on, can I do one more push up, one more push up? And like, I really hate push ups. And I'm actually been struggling 
and I'm going to be honest because I've been uh, I, for my next belt for my little red belt. I had to do 55 push-ups all in one go. And I was like, I got to. I think I got to 48. I, it was kind of hard to hear because it was the music is loud, not super loud, like where it's blasting your arrows off, but it was like a little loud so I can hear my instructor saying 48. And plus, I was like totally discomforted. I was like, I hope he said 48 and not 38. <laughs> so he's like, you're almost there. It's like, well, if it's by 48, I'm close. If it's by 38. <laughs> I don't know if you where you are with math, but uh, I was like, they're not that close. But uh, obviously, I did not say that to him. But uh, but anyway, uh, I love sports because it push. I like uh, karate because it pushes me. But then I also wanted to piggyback off of that. Uh, I when when I first started college, I was going to personal train, majoring in personal training uh, because. Well, I, I wanted to see how it varied between uh, online or or getting a degree in college. And the, to be honest, the degree in the college, I got stuck on science, and that was not my strong suit at all. And so I left for media studies, and I have to say I'm really like that I changed it. But I still have a passion for health and wellness, but uh, I just like, yeah, I don't think this is right for me. Because like math, science, and that my thing. And that's okay, but uh, glad I am where I am today. So my, 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 question, my next question for you is, when, why do you think, Mm. Trying to think, uh, what's your for people who are just starting out fitness and wanting to get into becoming a healthier, better version of themselves? How would how would how would they get started? Well, I think the first thing that we should assess is kind of see what their habits are and kind of see what their subconscious is telling them to change. A lot of times, if we look at an individual and we ask them, what is it that your subconscious is telling you that you shouldn't be doing? That's probably the first thing that we should start working on together to help them change. So say, for example, if it was somebody that maybe they're a little bit overweight and they know that they shouldn't have the cupcake that's sitting on the table and their subconscious has been telling them not to be overeating, but they always neglect it and they fall into the habit of, of eating what they shouldn't be eating. Or maybe that can be, that can be with uh, alcohol or maybe that could be with um, watching too much Netflix. Whatever it may be, there's a certain habits that people have that they know they need to change because if they really listen to their subconscious, it's telling them to, to do something different about their current situation. And it's just identifying that and being able to help them change that as well. So for example, if if it's somebody that isn't very active and they're consistently hearing themselves tell them, like say to themselves, like, hey, we need to do something. We need to move our body a little bit. We just need to pull out a yoga mat, start stretching, or maybe it's just going out for a walk for 10 or 15 minutes and do that every other day. So there's these little messages that we can hear in our subconscious that's going to tell us what we need to do. And the first thing to do is really identify what it is and try to make progress towards listening and taking action on what your subconscious is telling you. I, I definitely can relate to uh, that as well, because the other day I felt very, very sore. And before I started working out, I was like, I'm going to get my thumb roller because it was, it was like, I felt it from karate. Uh, and I was like, yeah, this is this does not feel good. I mean, it, it, and I was like, oh, this really, really hurts. Uh, and but it was like the good kind of hurts. It wasn't like the, oh, I just broke this or tore this. This was like, okay, I'm supposed to feel a little sore, not to put, but I, I kind of can't. St- 
this, this might sound a little harsh, and I'm sorry if it sounds very harsh, but, uh, but, but sometimes I get tired of the people who complain about, it. it's like, oh, I'm so sore, and I can't, and I don't take care of myself. And it's like, you're supposed to stretch, warm up, and it's like, that's pretty much everything consistently in every single program, even karate. It's like, get here early, stretch, and it's like, or stretch at your house before you come here, because you're going to feel like crap if you don't. <laughs> and you can be very prone to injury if you're not properly warmed up and stretched out. Exactly. Like, it doesn't always have to be a long warm up. It's like, sometimes my warm ups are like maybe. A minute or two long. Yeah. Well, even if you just do like a two to five minute dynamic warm up, you get your 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 blood is circulating in your body. Your your oxidation, your blood oxidation level is increased a little bit. You become a little bit more flexible, and you just have more oxygen in your body, and that alone can prevent a lot of injuries. So, I also want to. So I was just curious, what made you get, what made you get into uh, entrepreneurship? Because like for me, I got into entrepreneurship uh, because I worked for. Okay, I have never been in a corporate place before, so it wasn't that. But I worked in different fields. Like I, I worked as a dishwasher in a kitchen before, and. And I don't mean a national automatic dishwasher. I mean, I scrubbed everything by hand. And then, uh, let's just say, the boss was nice, but then I didn't like it that I can just climb up, so to speak, to the next position. It's like, you know, you get to stay as a dishwasher. And it's like, I can do so many, much, so much more. And to be honest, some of the cooks there, I'm not saying all of them, but some of them, they were <laughs> And my dad taught me how to cook at an early age. Okay, maybe I can't do everything fast paced, but I can still do pretty good on, on certain stuff. And, and if somebody taught me, I can literally do it. Uh, and I probably can do it as fast and maybe even faster if somebody taught me. It, but they didn't give me a shot until like the dead end of summer uh, in, in the last year of that I worked there. And it's like, bummer. So, but, but, and that was not my only boss. I had other bosses and then I worked for myself for Uber and Lyft. But as I, I want my own schedule. I want my, be my own boss. No one's above me. And I was like, oh, we're going to take away your money. And I was like, I'm going to be off on my own. So what made you get into entrepreneurship? Well, I think it's just seeing that there's opportunities to really kind of control our own destiny, our own faith, be responsible, more responsible for our own lives, per se. Um, not saying that if there's a path to working a job and that there's a light in the end of a tunnel to pursue a, a further dream it's totally worth it working a job to be able to do that there's a lot less stress and a lot of less others like a lot different opportunities that you can gain from that but for me i think it's just more of how i'm wired i i am more of a conceptual thinker i like i i like to call myself more of a visionary as well too so like i'm very good at strategizing very good at seeing things at a, at a bigger perspective. But when it gets to the nitty gritty and the actual implementation of doing certain things, I'm not the best at it. And I think kind of just knowing what my strengths are, I, I provide more value as a, as somebody that's able to kind of be a leader or a, or a manager. And I think a great opportunity to be able to do that is, through entrepreneurship, whether it is working for your own company or maybe you're a intrapreneur, which is somebody working in a, a different company but kind of acting like a like an entrepreneur. So I think my strengths are more on the consulting side and strategizing, and with with that, 
awareness of where ISL, I think it kind of led me to become more of a, a person that is interested in in the, the operations of things and figuring out how to grow and scale. So uh, could you expand a little bit more on what do you mean by nitty gritty? So, for example, um, I come from a digital marketing background. Uh, that's what I went to school for. And before getting into into the coaching space, I was I was helping helping small businesses with their digital marketing, whether that is helping them build websites, helping them with their digital marketing or their digital ads. And the implementation part is where I find myself not very interested in. Not saying that I don't know how to do it, but for example, if I were to build a website, I know there's somebody else that can do it a lot better than me. So I would find a developer and I would find somebody who who is a proper web designer to do the job because they're going to be able to do the job better than I am able to. But where I can excel is keeping the client relationship, being able to update the client with the progress and how things are going, and then being able to strategize the whole piece of the puzzle to kind of see how things should be working, how things should be implemented in order to really provide the the service and the value to the client. And that's where I would sell at, opposed to actually doing the website building or the website designing. I have to say, thank goodness that there's uh, building tools for websites because I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> Especially because uh, I'm not a coder. Uh, I tried coding classes. I I tried a coding class before I got into media studies, mm-hmm. and it, it's like finding Waldo, finding a broken piece of code, and it, it kind of really discouraged me. I, I mean, my professor was really nice, but he literally took off his glasses and he said, "There's the broken code." And I'm like, and he was with me with my glasses on. And I still can't find crap. <laughs> yeah, and I, that's that's the same with me too. Like I think it's I, I've taken I've also taken coding uh, coding classes, and I have very basic knowledge of of coding. But if you were to throw me in there to do it myself, like it would, I just don't have the patience, and I I'm not interested in actually doing it. So where, like I said, where I would sell is being able to find the right pieces having them implement it for me, whereas I can oversee and and strategize and, and consult. Well, and like, like just a transition to my next point, I, uh, like, you know, for instance, another reason why I didn't want to be somewhere in the, in the tech industry is I read a lot about articles of, about technology, follow technology updates, uh, social media marketing updates, etc. And, and I mean, I like the marketing aspect of it. I wouldn't want to work for another company for marketing. But I know, but uh, but the reason why I didn't want to get into something along with, let's say, uh, video production and everything, not because I didn't find it cool, but one of the tools that. Well, somebody said that was standard in the industry. I, I bought a like a lifetime tool, a lifetime purchase tool that I got to keep as long as they're around and everything. And they and it does the same exact thing as this other tool, but but this other one was just so complicated. It had like four different windows, and <laughs> and it's like and this windows moved, and this windows moved, this windows moved, and it's like. This is so stupid. And it's like I have this tool at home that has everything this tool does, but it's simple for fine. And it's like, well, this standard. And it's like, I don't care if it's standard. And it's like, let's make a new standard. Yeah. Who made the standard? Yeah, and like I was <laughs> once doing videos as well too. <laughs> like I I think kinda someone like me, I, I find myself I like a lot of things and I like learning and I like doing many different things. So I've 
you know, I'm always recording, so I always have my camera on. Um, I like the recording part, but I don't like the video editing process. So I've never developed the skill to become a, a, a great video producer or to be somebody who is able to kind of do very, very creative video editing. But then again, I know there's people out there that can do it better. So back then, I think this was, I'm going to say 2017, I had a, I had a partner who was the talent. He's the person that taught me how to do the video editing, taught me how to, how to shoot and record videos. And he was, he was the talent and I was the business development manager. So I was the guy that's looking for business and he was the guy that would do the work. So that's kind of how, where I find myself, you know, what, what works for me is being able to be the salesperson, the face of a company or being the, the spokesperson. And then I have the talent behind me that's able to, to deliver the service. Definitely. And I know we're, we're nerding out right now, which, uh, but I, I wanted to ask you, uh, how did you get, I, I know you said you played sports and everything, but were you always athletic or did you have a weight loss story? Yeah. So I've always been athletic. So I've always played sports throughout my whole life, even after high school. But as I was a little bit older, I started putting on more and more weight, uh, more and more body fat. I've never, I've never been obese. The heaviest I've been, I'm, I'm, I'm like six one, but the heaviest I've, I've ever been was just under two hundred pounds. So maybe around, around like one ninety five, one ninety seven at, at, at my heaviest in my life. And I've just always had the, the man boob, the gut, and every time I go into the, to the shower and I'm. Like I'm naked, I walk by the mirror and I'm like, man, I can really do better than this. Like, I was always embarrassed to to see myself in in the mirror naked because I've always felt that I could be, I could do so much more and be so much more for myself, and it's really work on getting in shape. But you know, everything I tried just didn't work. I wasn't disciplined. I loved eating and I ate a lot of junk food. I smoked a lot of cannabis, so that always led to me having the munchies. And in my early 20s, uh, I used to DJ at the club, so I would drink, drink like alcohol several times a week just because when I'm behind the decks, I'll, I'll have an alcoholic drink. And just pretty much over time, I think I just started putting on some weight. And then eventually the heaviest I've ever been was kind of during 2021 20, or so during COVID. And eventually when I got my real estate license, I'm like, I need to be in the best shape of my life. So other people can see me and know that I take care of my body. So they'll, the clients will think that I'm going to take really good care of them. And that's kind of what sparked the inspiration of just wanting to be in better shape. And once I finally got into the best shape of my life, that's when I had that calling where it's like, man, I can really help other people do this. Well, I know for, honestly, like for me, I got into uh, fitness after I got bullied for eight years. And I wanted something to be able to motivate myself to stand up to the bullies. I'm, a, I'm in physical enough shape to be able to keep going at karate and keep working out. I like to lose a, a, a little bit of my belly. I mean, it only sticks out when I sit down, <laughs> so, so to speak. But I mean, but it's not like I'm, I mean, I, I know I'm not overweight, but I just want like a tighter core. That's yeah. what I'm working on. And I'm not saying like, oh, I, I have to do this. I just want to do it just to, uh, just so like if I have any back spasms, it's not like, long or mm -hmm. t as I was actually having back spasms uh, early October uh, uh, and then so, but so uh, I'm just working on a tighter core so I'm trying to eat a lot I, I've been eating 
quite healthy. I'm actually changed to the Mediterranean diet due to the back spasms and it, how I got, how I figured out. I, I mean, honestly, it was just like I was kind of testing it to see. Let's try this for a little bit. If it works. I can't stay on it. If not, well, I only got the nutritional benefits. Mm-hmm. So there's really nothing wrong for me trying it. And even my doctor told me to go ahead and try it. So I was like, okay, well, he's saying to go try it. So, uh, uh, so how I got, sorry, how I, um, basically how I started was when I was in Ireland, the last three days I was in Ireland, I kind of put the two and two, two and two together that my doctor gave me this uh, medicine as an anti-inflammatory medicine. And then I was like, wait, the Mediterranean diet is anti-inflammatory. It's like, well, I'm going to finish up the the medication that he gave me because he told me to finish it up. I mean, and, but but then uh, then I was like, anti-inflammatory drug and uh, as prescribed was anti-inflammatory medicine anti-inflammatory diet. And I was like, hmm, let's try this. And so the, the, the few days I tried it, I, I was starting to feel like a lot difference in the back pain. And uh, maybe some people might say, oh, it's maybe just the medication wearing off. And but I was like, it's true. But then I kept on going at it for like a whole week. And I was like, Ah, I feel like everything is brand new. Mm-hmm. I, was like, I didn't even get a new. Uh, I didn't have any surgery or anything. I was like, oh, this is great. This is awesome. It's like now after karate, I was like, yeah, I'm sore, but it's not like, oh, I feel like I'm going to peel over and my back is going to uh, wear out. It's like, this is amazing. And obviously, uh, it might not be for everybody, but I've been trying this and my. My stomach has been feeling great. My back's been feeling great. My knee's been feeling great. I even got diagnosed. I I even was diagnosed with a um, uh, mild arthritis in my knee. So that's been fine too. And it's like, this is really weird. And it's like, I wish I had saved myself 24 plus weeks of physical therapy. <laughs> well, I think um, a lot of the cells that are created in in us and that are reproduced it's based off the food that we eat so that makes sense to me how if you're saying you changing your diet into an anti-inflammatory diet it's it's definitely going to help in my opinion i i really believe that that it's yeah if, if it's going to cause anti-inflammatory anti-inflammation in your in your body from the foods that you eat it's definitely going to help your muscles, your joints, and every other cell that's in your body. Yeah, especially because, like, you know, uh, and, like, I still get to eat meat, but just lean meat and, you know, red meat has been very, very expensive these days. So I was like, okay, well, if I can back off of red meat, oh, no. I mean, I eat chicken and turkey <laughs> that's my go-to meat is chicken and turkey yeah I, i've been eating chicken uh some, I, i'm not, i really only have turkey on the like thanksgiving because i'm not a huge fan of it but mm-hmm. i like chicken uh different types of fish uh i also like uh th- sometimes i have eggs uh but the, and I have lean pork chops, wow. but I, I don't do anything like super fatty pork. Mm-hmm. But and sometimes I like during Thanksgiving I had stuffing that had uh, sausage in it, but I don't have it every single day. You know we have leftovers, but I was like, don't have too much of this, Jimmy, because it's like this will backfire on me quickly. Yeah, like eighty. 80- 85, 90% of my diet is literally just turkey, extra, extra lean ground turkey, chicken breast, white rice. And that's 
mainly what I eat like that, or maybe some tortilla wraps if I don't want rice that day or some, some sort of bread, like English muffin, or maybe some sourdough. But other than that, like, those are kind of like the main things that I eat. And then majority of my diet consists of that. And then the other, the other little bit that I eat can kind of just be like anything, but I typically try to hit my, my proteins with extra lean ground chicken, uh, ground turkey or chicken breast or any part of chicken, any, but a lot of, a lot of other parts of chickens are, are a little bit more fatty and I try to avoid the high fat meats. So what does your, um, what does your training consist of and how long do you train for? So my typical training would be six days, push, pull legs, push, pull legs. And that's kind of every day usually takes about an hour, hour 15 or so. I do, I usually do like core every other day. So when I do core, it takes a little bit longer, but anywhere from around and 60 to 90 minutes. And then also as of right now, I'm actually on the 75 hard program. Are you familiar with what that is? No. So 75 hard is basically a program that's 75 days straight you have you have certain criteria that you got to do every single day so what they are is having two workouts two 45 minute workouts one of them must be outdoors drink one gallon of water read 10 pages of a self-help book take progress photos follow a diet no cheat meal and no alcohol so it's doing that for 75 days straight if you miss any of those criteria any any day within the 75 days, then you basically start back at, at day one. So right now I'm on day, day 45, so I got another 30 days to go. So I planned it out where uh, basically the last day will be the end of December. That must be hard with the holidays. Yeah, so I mean, I started the year off with it, so I decided that I wanted to end the year off with it. And yeah, now I'm 45 days in. I've been Basically, I'm working out every single day now, so seven days a week. But maybe once every two weeks, I'll take uh, like a rehab day where I'll, I'll do exercise bands or do some light kettlebell work, just things to to uh, mobilize the hip and and the uh, posterior chain. But yeah, I'm really feeling the fatigue right now. I'm my whole body's tired, my body's aching. This week is actually my deloading week, so I'm going to deload until Monday, and then on Monday, I start a new strength program that, uh, that I'm going to be focusing on for the, rest of this, for the rest of December. So I'm still planning that out right now, but it's probably going to consist of um, chest and shoulders, back, legs, maybe a little bit more shoulder dominant and then arms and then I'll figure out what I want to do for the next two days and then kind of do that again. But I want to try to incorporate a, not a rest day, but an active recovery day in the middle of the, of the week and at the end of the week, just so I can have some proper, have some proper recovery, even though I, I got to be active for the next 30 days straight. Uh, well, before I ask you my next question, I, uh, for me, I've been doing like I do. I do like six days a week at the moment, but uh, Saturday and Sunday are like my stretching and foam rolling days because Saturday I'm kind of leaning toward, more towards stretching and foam rolling, and Sunday just foam rolling. And the reason why is because I tend to go to church either online or in person. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a, and I was like thinking to myself, like my karate instructor always tells me I need to stretch more. I mean, not even just me, but everyone, because like whether you're sitting all day due to a job, at a uh, work environment job, and sometimes I sometimes sit too much, so I've been trying to be mindful of that. And so I was like, Realistically, I'm going to say Saturday is going to be my day of doing that because Sunday is like, oh, you know, sometimes I think to myself, like, you know, I'll just wait to do that at five o'clock in the afternoon. 
You know what I want to do on 5 o'clock in the afternoon on Sundays? Either watch football or some other sports team I'm watching. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's not going to be me stretching on s- Sunday afternoon. I mean, I'm not making excuses, but I'm just being realistic and say, like, Saturday, I know this sport's on, especially college basketball. It's like, yeah, I'll stretch during that. And it's like, because I'll be more int- interested in it and whatnot. But but it's like, Sunday, it's, it's always been a day of rest for me. Like, because it's like, I do some stuff for my, for crazy fitness guy, but then it's not like, um, like my typical Monday through Friday, what I do. And, and I, I still do some stuff on Saturday and Sunday morning, but then sometimes I don't have anything going on Saturday and Sunday morning because I've got everything scheduled out ahead of time. So then it's like, huh, this is really unheard of for me. So, uh, I'm using Saturday as my stretching days and, and just a mix of it, just to be so I'm not sitting all day, but I'm also not uh, feel like, oh, I'm neglecting stretching because it's important to stretch. Mm-hmm. And I tend to do like, uh, like 20 or 30 minutes of stretching because I have spinal stenosis in the top of my neck. So eventually, in those stretching routines, they always do some kind of like backwards bend that I can't do and then something I can't physically do. So it's like, it's like the 15 to 30 minutes is like my best points because then it's like anything higher, like 45 minutes, an hour, an hour, 30 minutes, it's like they're going to do something freaky and it's going to freak me out. It's like going to be like a scary movie. It's like, hey, let's bend your arm backwards around your head i I don't know (laughs) so my next question for you is if someone's starting out like with weight training or uh cardio how long should people go for because you know my karate used to be an hour long but now it's they based on science and everything that they did in 45 minutes to, because they can fit more, it can be quick and fit more rounds in. So just like, Hey, we're going to go an hour and try. And just because. Yeah. I think it, I think that's where you really have to assess their, what that individual is currently capable of. Like, everybody comes in all different shapes and sizes, right? So there's no one and one size fit all answer for that. So for example, if somebody comes in who is maybe 250 pounds and they want to start losing, losing weight, it might be unreasonable for us to try to get them to work one hour or two hour, work out for one hour or two hours straight. But if it's helping them build a healthy habit, just to start building some discipline to get him on track, maybe even 45 minutes is enough, like 10, 15 minutes of stretching and then 30 minutes of some strength training. And then maybe on, on his days off, get him to just do like 10, 15 minutes of of really low intensity walking just so they're not damaging their, their, their joints or their, their, uh, their knees or, or whatever. It's kind of, I think when you're working with beginners, it's more about helping them incorporate a healthy routine, a healthy lifestyle over trying to get them to see results immediately. Because once they have the routine down pat and they're comfortable with coming to the gym four or five times a week, even if it is for 45 minutes, and they're able to commit to that, I believe that's going to help them a lot more than it will help them in the long run. Sorry, that in, in the short run, if they're trying to just really get get results right away immediately. Uh, like for me, uh, doing karate three days a week, 45 minutes, uh, three days a week. Uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I tend to do like, i say on average around like 20 to 30 minutes uh, due to just my weird kind of work schedule sometimes uh either work in the morning or work in the afternoon 
like for instance, I joined my mom's bowling league on Mondays, so I got karate at night. But then Tuesday, I got class right in the middle of the day at twelve noon, uh, and it goes to like one thirty-five in the afternoon. So and it's like, okay, I'm not, I'm realistically, I'm not gonna go uh, work out in the afternoon. I mean. It was karate because it's high, holding me to its high standard and uh, and it's a cost me a buttload of money. And it's like, okay, you know, I'm going to go. Uh, I was going to go, but just like, I'm not being lazy, but I just know, okay, you know, I feel better in the morning and by starting off in the morning by working out before class and starting work and everything. So I'm going to do my 30 minutes. And it's like, if I had nothing to do, like if it was a vacation week for me, I might go longer because I have nothing else going on. Mm-hmm. But work week is like, can't start too, and like don't want to do something super big. And then I don't have enough time before class and I'm just rushing. And it's like me rushing through a workout is like, I thought this was supposed to be, uh, well, not relaxful, but at least like beneficial. But it's like, I'm feeling stressed in my workout. This is not working <laughs> very well. Yeah. Well, I think for you, you you already developed like a strong routine, strong the strong habit to stay disciplined in in getting your your training in. So it's, I think anything will work for you just because I think you prioritize the action of getting your training in more than scheduling it in or, or trying to get figure out how you're going to get into the gym because I think it sounds like for, for you, if you have available time, you are going to find a way to get your training in. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, I mean, my parents even knows when, when I'm not, uh, I haven't worked out in the morning. I mean, like on cry days, I'm, I'm, my mind says like, whatever I feel during the day, like, Frustration wise, depending on what's going on, I got karate. But in the on Tuesday mornings or or anything else, it can tell when if I'm in like a very frustrating mood, as like, oh, Jimmy's gonna be turning into the Hulk. <laughs> Especially when I if I don't sleep all at night, it's like I get as like I don't get I don't uh, turn in, I don't turn green and get grow big muscles. I just my face just turns a lot red. <laughs> I'm like a volcano. Mm-hmm. And if you feel the earthquake clear, uh, 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 that might be also me too. <laughs> so, uh, when, when you're working out, do you ever, uh, do you tend just to lift weights, cardio, or, or a mix of both? And have you ever used like resistance bands before? Yeah, so I, I have, yeah, you know, I do, I do cardio. So every day I go for a forty-five minute brisk walk. That's my my cardio. Um, while I'm doing my seventy-five hard, a lot of it is was hypertrophy training. So a lot of it was actually weightlifting. And then as I'm going into my strength program for December, that's also going to involve a lot of weightlifting. But yeah, I do use a lot of bands and um yeah basically bands and elastics for for recovery and rehab for warm-ups I do a lot of foam rolling i do a lot of stretching and i think it's what i prioritize is not necessarily trying to be a bodybuilder i'm not trying to i'm not competing i'm not looking to compete i'm not trying to get into like super peak physique in order to to function what i'm looking for is athleticism is to to obviously train for aesthetics to look good but not at a level where i'm trying to compete so i believe in staying a lot more functional over trying to be focused solely on bodybuilding so my training does kind of change and is very flexible and i always like do different things and incorporate different different exercises in order to to keep my flexibility going on to keep my to keep the enjoyment of doing different things when I'm training to be able to perform when I'm playing sports such as basketball or volleyball and yeah I, I just believe in being a lot more functional over full 
more focused being functional over trying to get into into um, competing shape. Yeah, for me, I'm just trying to maintain just to, because I said to myself once I lost uh, 30 pounds, I was nearly obese for my age group, uh, I'm going to say 18 years ago. Holy crap, I feel old. Uh, but I said to myself, I was never, ever going back that way ever again, even though my aunts and uncles and my cousins always joke with me. It's like, the old Jimmy was so much better. It's like he got to, he ate so much junk food. And it's like, well, he's never coming back. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it took me this, um, like, uh, I worked my butt off to be where I am today. And it's like, even if I get sick, I'm sick for a shorter time than I used to be when I, when I was growing up. Uh, I was like sometimes sick for like two and a half weeks or now it's like maybe a week and a half. And it's like, I mean, it still sucks to be sick and whatnot, but uh, but I was like, you know, what? It could be a lot worse. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask you, what do you think? Well, oh, uh, well, before I ask you, when I ask you the question, like. Uh, I, I kind of glanced over this, and my apologies, my brain's all over the place. But, uh, like, I, I wanted to re- piggyback off of one thing you said earlier that, you know, you, you didn't, uh, you didn't, uh, you didn't always have all those healthy habits. I also didn't have many healthy habits as well. I used to play 90 plus hours of video games a week because it was my escape from bullying. Uh, I drank a lot of soda. Now, the only soda that I drink occasionally is ginger ale uh, because it's light and won't stain my teeth. And how I got rid of my soda uh, habit was, well, let's just say when growing up because I drank a lot of soda, made my teeth yellow and everything, stained my teeth. And so finally, when I got my teeth and gums to a nice, healthy level, my parents uh, let me get uh, my teeth whitened at my dentist. Uh, but only if, and so it was like my gold because I knew if I got my teeth whitened, I'm never going back to uh, drinking soda again because as I, well, I, mean, I know ginger ale soda, but I mean the, the stuff that will stain your teeth. And I mean, no soda is good for you, but if I'm craving a little bit of something, well, I might have ginger ale then. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say it. The cola. So my next question for you is, what uh, do you train in? in a, do you train in the gym? Do you train in your house, or where do you train at? I train at the gym. Um, on some rehab day, rehab days, I'll train at home. I have a few light kettlebells. I have a I have a steel mace. I have some bands at home, and then I also have a gym in in the apartment that I'm at too. So, I ideally I can get get training done at home or in the apartment, but I just like having proper plate loaded equipment and just the, the actual actual proper equipment at at the gym so i prioritize training at the gym but sometimes if i'm if i'm in a time crunch i'll train at home or in the apartment gym and i was curious uh when you're training at the gym what do you see at the gym that most people get wrong about weightlifting i'm gonna want to say their diet um there's some like if you go to the gym you see these guys that are working out consistently they're training every day the on the treadmill like you go there two years ago you go there three years ago like they're in the same shape they haven't like it's great that they're getting their exercise in but they're not making any progress in terms of of their physique or even their strength. It seems like they go there as a routine over trying to better themselves. Not saying that they're not bettering themselves because they're doing a great job 
staying consistent. But what I feel is, is bad is like staying consistent at something, but never seeing any progress or improvement. So basically, I am staying complacent or uh, hitting a plateau and staying at that plateau. And not doing anything about it. Exactly. You know, I, I'm not going to name this person, but, you know, I, I was talking to somebody the, the other day and, and saying that they need to drink more water. And it's like, and it's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'll just have a soda. And I'm like, that's the worst thing you can do after you just worked out of having a soda. And like, I mean, okay, it wasn't hard. It was hard for me to quit too, but uh, before my teeth whitening and everything. But and I thought I was gonna miss it. But now that I saw. Know that there's an alternative like ginger ale, once in a blue moon, not going to probably do so much damage to you. Like if you, but but just but like people saying like, oh well, you know that that's how I hydrate. And it's like that's a dehydrator. Mm -hmm. It's like water is a hydrator, and that's it. Look, I even got my hydro flask, and yes, I'm uh, I'm advertising it. Yes. <laughs> Well, I got not my sponsor, unfortunately. I have to drink a gallon of water every day, so I'm I always have water beside me. Yeah. So my next question is for you: What's the best way for people? Is there a trick for people to get more water? And then, and how much water do you, men and women should drink a day? Well, I think what's commonly said is like eight glasses a day. So if we're saying eight glass, that's, let's just say 250 mil times eight, that's two liters. I think that's a little bit too little, but I don't think most people even drink two liters of water a day. I think even just to start with that would be very beneficial to, to somebody's health, especially if they weight train as well, because our muscles are about 70% water and we want to stay hydrated. And if you don't even even drinking more more water, I feel that it 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 will aid with muscle growth. Just having a little bit more water in your in your system it prevents dehydration. You're able to train better. You feel better. And yeah, our our body is overall our body is majority wa uh, of it is water. So I think hydration is is super crucial for our everyday health. I definitely can relate to that, especially because there's one time I don't make a habit of it, but there's one time where I did not have enough water for karate, and I I felt like I was gonna like pass out. I was like, oh boy, I was like, note yourself, drink more water, <laughs> and I actually came up with a really good uh, good hack for uh, drinking water. So. There might be, there are apps out there for drinking water reminders out there, but here's my hack. Find a drinking water reminder app for your phone or your computers, if you have multiple computers or whatever. And if there's not one that you really like for your computers because it doesn't sync with your phone, well, here's another best way. So I have this app on my phone called My Net Diary. It's like my fitness pal, but better. Don't tell them I said that. I just tell them, screw up. And so, uh, and there's this app called Push Bullet. Now you're probably wondering, like, why would I hell would I use Push Bullet? Well, there has this uh, mirror notification on it for free. And so it'll take your phone's notification systems and you can tailor to which apps you want to notify you. So every hour of the hour, I get a message that's time to drink more water. And it's like, damn it, he's right. And it's like, and when I don't have my water bottle next to me, it's like, oh crap, I gotta go get some now too. And so that forces me to get up. And but I mean, I usually have my water bottle with me. But if it's like Saturdays, I 
clean it once a week and and on it I do not clean it I read I heard something on the news once that yeah that you're supposed to clean reusable water bottles after every use. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna sit by the sink all freaking day of washing this water bottle. There's no way. I was like, you know, if I have to, well, as you know, that wouldn't even work either. And it's like, I would have to have stockpile every single water bottle there and no. <laughs> Hydro Flash is like, thank you for buying a thousand water bottles. <laughs> But, but that that's my trick is like so on my on my uh, on my computers I get a notification every single hour is it time to drink some more water and it just reminds me to stay hydrated throughout the day and it's a free trick so try it yeah. you will thank me <laughs> so before we wrap up uh, my my last few questions. Where can people follow you to learn more information about who you are and what you do? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram. My Instagram is at Kianyu, at K-E-A-N-E-Y-U. I'm always active there. If you shoot me a DM, it's me responding. And I try to get back to everyone as quick as I can. And I'm basically on Instagram pretty much 24-7. So that's the main platform that I'm on. And that's the easiest place that anyone can reach me at. And uh, just out of curiosity, um, uh, my, my next question is for you, who's your favorite podcaster and why? And feel free not to say me. I think my favorite podcaster right now is Bedros Koulian. I don't know if you've heard of the BK show, but he's, um, yeah, he's just some guy that that preaches a lot of uh, things that I agree with. And he's very focused on personal development, entrepreneurship, being the best version of yourself and uh, listening to to him speak. He's got like, he's just very charismatic. And he, I think he makes very great point, like very valid points consistently. And he's just somebody that I I admire to be like. Well, uh, I I hope I make your list of podcasts one day too. <laughs> uh, so my last question is, uh, where do you see your entrepreneurship slash fitness journey in the next, let's say two to f five years? Two to five years. Well, by two years, I hope that I have coached and mentored more than 500 people online and uh, I hope to be able to really kick off my my uh, personal training career as well and hopefully within the five years we just continue to do the same thing and just yeah uh, right now I feel that my everything that I'm doing in my day-to-day -day is very aligned with my goal of just being able to to train every day to be able to inspire and empower other people to be on that journey as well and be able to make content and then also be able to coach people so me doing that every single day is really me just living a life by design and my last question for you is uh what would you say to somebody if they're struggling to lose weight and staying and and struggling going to the gym and motivating themselves? Well, I would I would suggest that they find a coach, somebody who can hold them accountable and really work with them and guide them through the process, as opposed to trying to tackle it on their own. Because chances are. If they haven't ever seeked a coach or found somebody who's going to help them and hold them accountable before in the past, and I, I believe that they haven't gotten results is because they haven't done that. I'm sure it's not their first time wanting to be on that journey to to lose lose weight, to become in better shape, and them whether they've 
partially been successful and they rebounded. It's probably because they haven't developed the healthy habits or the lifestyle in order to achieve the results. And finding a coach or somebody who's going to be able to hold them accountable to that can really help that process and really transform their life by holding them accountable and helping them develop the healthy habits to make it a lifestyle. Well, that's really great advice. And I will also piggyback off of that. Uh, is, you know, I didn't think I would be able to lose that 30 pounds, but I mean, I, I met when I went to Ireland, I gained some weight, lost it again. And, and as, as a little, I mean, now when I gain weight a little bit here and there, I realize it's just going to fluctuate. And as I, that's fine. As long as I can keep staying in between the goals I'm wanting to, and I'm okay with it. But yeah, uh, I've seen some people who freak out about it. Like, I gained three pounds. It's like, relax. It was about twenty pounds. Okay, be concerned. But three pounds. It's like you. you it's like your weight's just going to fluctuate. That three pounds can literally just be water, or maybe they had. A little bit too much bread, and they're holding on to more water. You know, it's, it, it could even be having a big meal. Having a big meal the night before you weigh yourself can put on five, six pounds. Exactly. Uh, I'm sorry. I have one more question for you, uh, just just now, and and then I'll let you go uh, away from this prison cell. Or uh, my, I was wondering the last. Uh, in your opinion, when do you think people, when's the best time for people to weigh themselves? First thing in the morning before doing it, well, after they do their number two. So wake up, maybe take a sip of water just to hide, like just to, to quench your thirst, but don't drink a lot of water. Do your business, do your number one, number two, and then right after that, weigh yourself. And be consistent with the time that you weigh yourself and and uh, ensure that you are, yeah, you, you're not drinking too much water and you've taken your number two before you get on the scale. And I think if you're consistent with the time that you do it and you keep try to keep the variables the same as possible, that's going to be the best result in terms of finding your, your own weight. And then take an average of, of what, what you weigh every single week and use that as kind of your, your baseline weight every single week. Awesome. Well, I hope you'll be, uh, will come back on the show again in the future because, uh, obviously we can always keep come talking about fitness and nerding out some more. Yeah, that's fine. I'm such a nerd. <laughs> nerd for fitness. Woohoo! I'm a nerd too. I just don't have my glasses on right now. Hey, my glasses make me look smart. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I'm a pretty smart, but yeah, uh, that does make me sound look. That does make sound look good. I wish I had James Bond glasses in these. That would be awesome. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks for being a guest on the show, and uh, so I'll look forward to talking again soon. Yeah, hundred percent. Thank you so much for having me. Definitely. So that's all the time we have for today. Uh, if you enjoyed the show, please like, subscribe, follow, and share with your family, friends, and everyone who you know. Until next time, which is tomorrow, I'll be back again for another brand new episode of Crazy Fitness Guy.